Hi guys, it's Keith here. Since I put that post up yesterday about me like, becoming an admin, um, I got hit up very quickly with uh, a number of people friendly questions, things like that, then questions about magic paging. Basically, the main question what come out was, how do you set them up? Okay, now, Mike's covered it in, you know, on webinars.net. If you haven't been on here, then get yourself on and basically go through these videos. Some of them are old. I mean, if you're not in affiliate marketing, then obviously avoid that one. Obviously, Tim's masterclass on GMB is good and still relevant. Now, some of these, obviously, when you're going through, the magic page has changed a bit. But you can still pick nugget up. I have been through every one of them. You know, and obviously, this one, this one will save you money and help you get more leads. Okay? So, well worth watching. It tells you how to set up your AdWords so that, you know, you can reduce the amount of cost you pay for your AdWords, which is really good. If you think of some of the niches, what we'll be targeting, when you've got, like, over in the UK, you're talking about, like, sort of 15, 20, 25 pounds per click. If you can knock 70% of that, where well, you can make a killing on your leads. And like I say, all these other ones, that go through all the different stuff, what is helpful, yeah, Yes, the magic page might be out of the way, you know, a bit out of date. But I've picked up stuff up here of what people, of other people who have asked a question. And I've thought, oh, that's a good idea. Let's have a play with that. And then I've had a play with it and, you know, found some new ways of doing things. So we can all learn from each other. There's nobody who's like sort of knows it all, you know. I pick up from everybody who I can. Yeah. I'm like a magpie, I'll pick out of So there's lots of videos there. And obviously, as I start like, sort of doing videos and things like that, there'll probably be some more going on. I'm going to try and keep mine short instead of like sort of having long ones. Pure and simple because I want to keep them like sort of tight together and so that you can dip in and dip out. So this one I'll go over one part of what I do, and then I'll do another video which will go over the other part. Well, if you haven't been on webinars.net, then like sort of you know, really get yourself on there and have a look. You will get you know, a lot of golden nuggets out of there. And there will also be times when somebody will ask us a question, and if it's been covered by myself, Mike, or anybody else, and there's a video there, I will sort of say, go have a look at the video. I think you learn a lot better by actually doing than being shown it all the time. You know, if you're just you know following what we do constantly, you're not actually going to learn anything. Yeah, so you do actually need to do it. So it is best to actually build the site yourself and not rely on other people. Yeah, and at least get like an understanding of how it works, because then you know if anything does go wrong you can fix it there and then, especially if you work doing these for customers, yeah, and clients and things like that. Clients are not gonna wait like sort of three, four, five days while you, you know, shoot onto Facebook and try and get us to answer the question for you. Yeah, you need to be able to like sort of, you know, be a bit proactive and, you know, things change, Google changes, all sorts of things change. So you need to be able to be a bit proactive. Now, if you're using Elementor, which I do, I've only recently got on to using Elementor. I've used loads of different themes in the past. Um, but again, it's part of this where you will actually need to understand a little bit of coding. You don't need a lot, but you know, a good thing to understand is CSS and also a little bit of HTML. Because in the elements, which I use in like my themes because it makes things nice and easy. And because once you've got the elements set up, they will just go across. So like in your global page header, there uh, you just into there. And basically you do need to know that there's no drag and drop builder in here. It's all code. Yeah, it's not difficult. Yeah, all the stuff's down here which tells you what the template tags are. 
I think what I use are the template tags as post title. Put in H1, which means it's the header one there. And then I just sent there my leads on there. And this bit here is quite straightforward. It is just like the drag and drop bit. When you put an image in, or you can say it will use the featured image. If there isn't a featured image on the page, it will use this image. And that's all it does. And you can change the background color, text color, and stuff like that. Because this is a test site, I haven't bothered with all that. I've just basically knocked this together. But do, you know, get yourself involved like the code. The code inside of it is, you know, the best either for me. I love it. I love getting my hands dirty and getting underneath it and playing. A good place to learn that is W3C Schools. Now, if you type in W3C Schools, you know, CSS, it will come up with a tutorial for you. You can learn JavaScript, you'll learn a whole lot. But the main ones you want to look at is like sort of your HTML side, but CSS. Yeah. Well, you can learn a lot from there, and you like I say, you've got these examples, and then you've got to try it for yourself. Which basically means you can have a play and you don't damage anything. Yeah. No, you do, you couldn't paste that code in to whatever you want. Yeah, so that's just, that's all that is. All right. So, how do we build a site? Well, the first thing I'll do is I will have a look at what's ranking. So whatever I'm targeting, I'll have a look, see what's ranking, and see what they've got on. Now, nine times out of ten, the sites that are ranking will have, like, sort of decent amount of information on. Like I say, keeping with the theme of things, I've just chucked together the site, which is about locksmiths. <laughs> Locksmith is not one of the niches I'm in, so if whoever's watching this who likes doing all the spamming and trying to, you know, do damage to the site, knock this off top, because I'm not bothered about the site, it's just a test site, which, you know, I don't care what happens to it. Yeah, I just thought I'd keep the theme of things and go for like sort of locksmiths. Blades and Wakefield are basically areas where I live, um, in the UK. So that was nice and easy to set up. Even though in here it's got like sort of Surrey and Berkshire and Hampshire, that's because I just nicked it from somewhere else. But this is my home page. Now, my home page, what I do is I set up basically a standard like sort of theme. I set it up, so I say this was going to be my standard theme. Every locksmith site which I now knock out, will be using this theme. We'll have a logo up in the corner. Let's go down, we'll have something nice in the footer and you know, bits and pieces like that. Because I'll make the footer look nice. But it will, they'll all have the same structure. Now over time, I'll probably change this structure around. But I have one base site which is what I use. Now, Mike shows all about this with the, in the evergreen thing. Yeah. And you just build a site up and it's a piece of cake because all you do is you copy it, you upload it, and done. You, know, you change a few things, set up your magic page, and it's done. But what I do as well, just to make it that little bit more unique, if you like, if we go into... Have a look at my pages. Even these static pages are actually spun content. Yeah, so it's not just my magic pages spun content, it's my static ones. But I don't have it be doing the spun content every week, every month or whatever. I just leave that as it is for now. I mean I might do it in the future and play with it. But at the moment I just leave it as it is. Okay? But it means that every time I install a new site, the content is slightly different from the previous one. So they're not all like 100% the same. You know, it's got different spun text in. Now, for some reason, these sites, probably because I'm uh, recording this with 
computer to decide to run a bit on the slow side. But every, like I say, every site has got unique content. Yeah. Now, the spun content is basically, why don't you say not the word? Spun content I basically take from the sites that are ranking on page one. But I, I don't put it into Spin Rewriter and let Spin Rewriter do it. I put it in and I go through and I pick the words out which will make it the best. So that basically it doesn't matter what it does, it actually will come out readable. And like somebody took the time and actually wrote it. Yeah, because basically I have. But it will be like sort of eighty percent, ninety percent, whatever you need, depending on your the area I'm in. It looks like Elementor doesn't want to put it there. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so as you can see, I've got the spun content here. There. The spun content in here, the spun content in there. Obviously, the phone number is not spun content. Um, you can use X fields in these. So, if you have, if I had a, a phone number for leads and a phone number for Wakefield, in the magic page, I could put an X field in there and it would work. Um, down here, spun content. So this is all spun. I've left these images as they are, um, but you know you could spin them images if you wanted. No, but I haven't. I just left them as they are. But every page on the site is spun content. Like I say, I don't re-spin it every you know x amount of days. I just leave it as it is because my where you go. It will come up and obviously, you know, when I put another site up, say for, you know, Locksmith Manchester, then basically that would come up exactly the same. They've got a different way of putting the form on there, or the form on instead of a video. Put video in there. And as you can see, this is just, again, plenty of text. You want, you know, a good couple of pages, like sort of, you know, if I was doing locksmith, I'd have like emergency locksmith, auto locksmith. A good couple of pages of text for the actual, you know, to get Google to understand what your site is about. Then when you go to your locations, What I tend to do is, again, lots of content going on. This image here is spun. You know, um, the video when it comes up, I can spin that. You know, or I can replace it again using X fields. And these are like sort of things we're we'll probably going to do is you go further down and stuff like that. Well, I put like sort of plenty of content on and make sure I've got like sort of you know, my keywords in. Well, that should be location because I don't know, I believe I'm on actually. So I've got my keywords in there like Leeds Emergency Locksmith. Yeah, I'll probably put another Leeds in there if I was doing it for real. Make sure you've got plenty of call to actions on. So I'll probably have a call to action underneath the video call to action there, then you've got your, your map, which obviously tells you where you are, and then you've got all these down the bottom. And that's it, it's putting time in. You know, maybe you get your first site up and get it working, and then look at it and then think, okay, what do I need to do now? Right, but then take that first site, put it somewhere, and then work on it and then develop it a bit better. Then upload it to your second site. And then use that again as your basis until you get a site which you are happy with 
And then all you've got to do then is keep tweaking it every now and again. Like, so, you know, maybe move that to the side and put a video here or, you know, whatever. But just play with your sites. You put plenty of content on. It's no use doing a magic page with like a home page and then all these location pages, 10,000 location pages. You're not going to rank. Well, they might rank for, you know, out of Mongolia somewhere, but they're not going to rank for anything that's like sort of worthwhile going for. Look at what's on page one, and basically from then, work off how much content you need. You've got pages that's on page one for, you know, the keyword you target, in, which you've got like, you know, one page websites, and you only need one page website. If you've got pages on there, which obviously you've got four, five, six, seven page websites, then you need to have four, five, six, seven pages yourself. Okay? The more time you put into actually building these up, the better it is for you. Yeah, because the longer they'll last. Another point about them is when you do your magic page, what I found is to keep the area nice and tight. Yeah. If you try and do like sort of your a thousand miles around leads and you create all these hundreds and hundreds and thousands of pages, what you tend to find, because a lot of them don't get any traffic at all, that then Google looks at that as though your site's crap because it's not getting any traffic. There are all these pages that nobody's visiting. If you keep it nice and tight, so you've only got like say, you know, like say, like I've got there 30 mile around leads, then basically I'm going to hit you know, some areas and some of them will get traffic and some of them won't. But because of the amount of pages and the amount of traffic I'm getting, it evens itself out. So I take, I tend to find that I'll keep more stuff which will be indexed than if I try and go for big ones. The other thing, just to try things out, what I've actually done with a few of my sites is actually put them into Google Analytics, you know, Search Console, the whole job lot. And I can now look and see what's going on. Now, obviously, I was a bit wary because I'm letting Google into me, uh, in my garden, so to speak, and like letting them have a little snoop around. But they've now been up for about five, six months in Google Analytics, and they are ranking, and you know, I'm getting loads of information off them. And but it's because I've got them nice and tight. If I had like sort of 10,000 pages, the chances are, and you know, they're going to get hit. They just Google's going to spam them, and especially if they have like really thin content on. Because again, this page needs to have plenty of content on. Don't just put like sort of you know, two or three paragraphs up. Put plenty of content on. Uh, like I said, that's for that bit. Your yeah, SEO settings, this basically is important if you want to rank because this is your meta title. So make sure when you are building your meta title, your spin tax for them, you do have like sort of your keywords in first. Yeah, you know, like lockdown, lots of keys, lockdown, 24, 24, 24, and then the locksmith. Yeah, like I said, just bang these together, I haven't really thought about them that much. Meta descriptions, not used as much for Google, um, but obviously they are used for clickbait to get people to click through, so make sure they are good. Obviously, Xfield phone number, because you can put that on, and depending on, did I put any in? I guess I have. So, if basically this is in WF8 or within five miles of WF8, then it, the XFIO phone number will become that. If it's like sort of three miles of there, it will become that. Yeah. And that's how you use your XFIO. Same with your video. I don't think I'll have. Again, if it's five miles of WF1, it'll have a different video on. 
Okay, you just set them up like that. That's X fields are absolutely bloody great. I love them. Uh, I use them for all sorts of different things. But they are the two main ones where I use them for. for changing the phone number and also changing changing the video. You might have a, a client who basically, you know, or a site which, like I have there, where I say they're covering like Leeds and Rayfield. They might have one client in Leeds, so I send them all the Leeds stuff. And then I have another client in Wakefield, where I send all the Wakefield stuff. So obviously I need to split the, the phone numbers out. Now there is some overlap, because obviously, you know, uh, some of like sort of your, your locations, it will come up and it'll, you know, they'll overlap each other. One won't be in Wakefield, one will actually be in Leeds, but it all works itself out in the bush eventually. So that's about it really for like sort of this sort of the quick video. Um, but it's take your time and build a decent site. Do your keyword research first. You need to know what you're targeting. Do your competitive research, sort out what they're doing, build a decent site, and then once you've got your site going, let it sit for a bit, let it get indexed, see what's happening. Then you can start thinking about your next steps of like sort of you know, how you decide you're going to rank it. I mean, even things like sort of putting videos on the pages do wonders for it. Yeah, if you've got a page which you want to rank, but it's like sort of nowhere to be seen, you put a video on it, a relevant video that is. Again, the video the video is optimized for that area as well. Then basically, you know, it will help it rank a lot. And also, if you optimize the video for that area, again, it's another thing which you can get ranked on Google. Okay. Hope that's helped. Yeah, if you have any questions, anything like that, feel free to like sort of catch us in the, the thing. If there's enough people to ask the same question, then I'll probably create a, a video for it and, you know, things like that. I don't mind knocking the videos together. Like I said, I've now got a test site, so I can play. And obviously, as time goes on, I'll probably get two or three more test sites built up so I can do like sort of lots of different stuff. Okay.